classic bot. This is a really classic bot, bot lane matchup. In fact, uh, Ruler, back when he earned his skill on the, his skin on this champion, the Zyra Khan versus the Ezreal Karma, that was one of the uh, biggest matchups of the era. Very strong level one lane from LPC and Jin Zhao. And as soon as he gets to the point where you get something like a, a, a Mikhail's coming in from um, from that support, you're really starting to struggle as JDG to cut to close down um, something like this Ezreal. I almost wonder if LPC is in a really good spot to have another great carry performance. JDG, they cannot afford to let this Ezreal get a lot of gold, because given this composition, there isn't a lot which can get to him if that initial engage fails. And while I do think JDG are opting into their style by saying, you know, we're going to make it to the late game and then you're going to pay, that is an opt-in for them. And I, th I think it is a tried and true direction. But after that first game, right, I, I was kind of wondering if, if JDG were just going to try to come out swinging. But it looks like they're going to go tried and true. We have a bar of execution that is needed for LGD, but they have gotten a lot of the pieces they need to set up for success. And again this is a roster that has been so close to fighting their first series win of summer's play if they did it against jdg oh my god what a way <laughs> what a world and what a future for lgd is uh they are gonna have to scrap it out they're gonna have to try to finish out this second game you do not want to give those mistakes over to jdg as we're gonna be loading into game number two now we'll get those gyos ringing in jdg's home arena Um, you'll notice though at the top of the screen, once again, much like that last game, the gold is not really reflecting what we consider to be quite a strong lead at this point. Meteor does find Kanavi in the jungle, probably going to just queue over that wall, so we'll do safely. However, Haichiro has a move towards this bot side, has flash, has ult, Ruler does not have ult, very importantly. This could be a game-turning play if LGD choose to pull the trigger. Knight's coming down, they do land more damage on the Kanavi. Missing, just try to dodge out. Knight is here. They need to know. Okay, now they know he's there. They're going to turn around. LPC can't really get to the fight over here, but he's going to crash this big wave and just try to pick off Kanavi as he can get him. That's the auto attack of first blood for LPC. They're going to fight for. Oh my goodness. It's tragedy struck again for JDG. Knight should clean this one up with the power at oh, least. Does he get cleaned up too? He's got the minions. They are blocking. Jin Zhao's trying to chase him down with the root. He'll flash to make sure he can connect it. LPC doesn't have the damage just yet, though. And Knight is the lone survivor of what has rot in bot lane. But once again, the big loser of this play is Ruler. Ruler is sat two levels down behind LPC. LGD, they have come in with a strategy, and that is make Ruler's life hell he doesn't have nearly enough xp or hp to outplay this high shout probably didn't even need to pull that ultimate at that point it takes one too many tower shots this could have been a very clean yeah uh three for none i understand the need to tr i understand uh, going forwards with that ult in retrospect it's a lot easier to tell at that um that juncture but still lgd walking away with multiple kills walking away with taking summoners yeah. away from jdg kanavi was spotted around this bot side it's one of the few times that JDG have had a chance to push in the spot side. Oh, hold. that's a big combo with that charm as well in the LPC. You might have the ulti, but Ruler wants to clap back a little bit here. What auto attack from Kanavi. That'll be a double kill for the jungler of JDG. Be very important to uh, get that tower a little lower, particularly because once laning phase and bot side ends, you do tend to go towards that mid lane stage. Oh, oh Meteor, Pop Blossom on a two, and that could be it. Meteor gets it on the night. Kanavi missing that initial engage spelled doom for the JDG mid laner. Leads to that Herald being much easier dropped elsewhere. And as you can see, it's heading towards the spot side. More gold to the Ezreal. Yeah, they could just take this tower if they get a little bit more damage onto it. But that charge could be huge. They don't have the minion wave, oh, sadly, teleport though. behind. They're they highlighting that. There it is. Here comes 369. Oh, oh that's nice. That's, that's, an early, that's an early charm, though. The quickness is so big, and LPC is just down. That is big damage, but a double TP in response from LGD. They lose all the pressure around the map. And that's a heck of a trigger pull. That was, because that could have been a huge play for LGD in regards to getting plates and that first turret bonus onto the Ezreal. They managed to once again shut down LPC at an important point in time. He does get himself that Triforce Wukong. There's a chance that you lose Meteor for free. Knight, mm -hmm. they're going to spot that uh, in that brush at that point. LPC trying to siege out once again. Second Herald has spawned. Kanavi pulls the ult. Oh, they found the flank with Kanavi. Big Glacial Prison. They've already taken out Jin Zhao now. 
There's another TP from Fearless, but here okay, comes 360. It's the double flank, and they're on the four members with the all No! Oh, he doesn't go over the wall. LPC will flash away. And now LGD are looking for this front to back. Meteor tries to go in, tries to get the True Trap Barrage across, but LPC will go a little bit wide with that one. Holy moly. So, Jinjiao caught out of position. Karma has forever been the first target of these engages because she's easy to kill, even if she makes other people harder to kill in her own stead. Um, and of course, that was a little bit what we saw about uh, the worries we have of Ezreal versus a champion like Asante. Often, something like your Arcane Shift is not enough to see you to safety. You have to use that flash, you not have that flash available for that next engagement. Was in a bit of an awkward position. Pushes up in that mid lane, but the play doesn't happen in the mid lane. LPC has to reposition himself, and now Knight's actually the one caught out. They're catching out Knight. Hightail flashes for that pop blossom, and here comes Meteor to slam down the big old stick. Meteor gets that kill, and Knight gets caught in side lane. They should be able to push this side tier three at least. Was well, not a lot from that true shot barrage. The Rift Arrow is going to be used as a distractionary tool in mid lane for JDG so they can position around this fight. And I just love that we're getting a five on five here. Meganar early from Fearness. He is completely caught out. And LGD now Meteor's caught out too. He's going to have to be careful one by one. The dominoes are starting to fall. And it's just the decisiveness from JDG that makes the difference. And they also catch out Jin Zhao. Ruler has come alive in this game number two. Knight gets a couple of stuns. LGD can't position correctly. Ruler has to force the ult, but it's not enough to see him go down. Big knockback from Knight buying a lot of time. LPC gonna burn that heal, but he comes all the same at 369. Picks out LPC. Big pop blossom, but it's not gonna be enough today. Scatter the week from Knight, and that's a full on ace from JDG. And suddenly, out of nowhere, JDG spring into life. LGD. Might have had themselves an angle if they could have arranged their team fight a little better, but Fearness just caught out in the middle of nowhere. LGD, they need to escape the initial engage, and LPC needs to be in range to do damage. Well, they don't escape the initial engage onto one of their targets, and regardless, Ezreal's not there to do damage. Why are LGD positioning so aggressively when their one true source of damage isn't in position? I can't tell you the answer to that one, but it really doesn't work out for them in this fight. And again, wants to see LPC using that arcane shift. JDG notes go time as well. They can focus onto that Ezreal if they so wish. Gives them the green light to continue the siege. And this is the JDG that we were so fearful of going into game one that we never saw, right? They just pick apart team fights. They pull it out of a rabbit, or rabbit out of the hat rather, and able to find a lot of those strengths through that decisive pick making Another pick. and through Kanavi's glacial prisons who he's taking a 1v4 now a little bit of help from missing so 2v4 but it's still a lot of pressure subsided from JDG honestly vision at this point for LGD is oh, this might stop us from dying <laughs> it's very very different <laughs> kind of the um the emphasis on what that vision is there for. Um, not that it makes it any less important, it's just a very different kind of thing, because that vision stops you getting Ooh, like that. There's that decisiveness yet again, and I was questioning the karma early on. It gets picked out yet again. LPC finally shows up. Pop Blossom is gonna go way wide as Missing actually goes down. LPC will get that phase shift out of there, trying to get a re-engage as Kanavi. 369 is the scary member. They do get some good poke on a Kanavi. It's mid lane that JDG wants. 369. Once again, happy to take a 1vx scenario. Says, okay, fine, I'll just stand here. Try and fight me if you can. At least LGD get one kill back, and that kill does go over to, I believe it went over to LPC. Would have been very important to do so at that point. 369 still has flash, still has ult. Could potentially cut, uh, shut down Hydeshout here. Knight's coming around the corner, too. These are two that you never want to see when you're all by your lonesome. I need to get away from this one. I try to play as a ward. <laughs> Can't do it though. All right, Chow, you get all outed and Kanavi gets the kill. Sneaky, but not sneaky enough. Got further than I gave him credit for at least. Um, but not nearly the same level of Nico destruction that we've seen in earlier games and earlier, even in the day. Teleports back in, it's that barrier which you can't let go down, but Jin Zhao, this karma is absolute paper yeah. tonight on the Syndra. It Meteor is nowhere nearby to even have a say in this contest. That's Baron God Gadavi. He wants oh, it. Oh, not again. Guess who he finds? It's Jin Zhao again. LPC's by himself against Ruler. Ruler takes him out of the fight, takes him out of the game, and so too falls LGD one by one. 
That is unceremonious. I don't know what Jin Zhao's done in a past life, but his karma is looking pretty bad right now in multiple senses of the word. Zero and five taken down with extreme prejudice from Kanavi. Knight dies and then goes, huh. Medjai sounds like a good idea. A bit of a victory lap in that one. JDG really putting LGD to the sword. 369 is just going to chase down Hai Chao here. He's not having a good game too either. And uh, the duo of Ruler and 369 find a lot of pressure even after that fight. That means Kanavi, the king of the picks so far, sets the tempo of this one. But this one is really threading the needle in just the most, like, painful How? way. <laughs> just slides around Fairness and goes, yes, my true target, the supporter, I've been killing the whole game. Jinjo is just not able to play League of Legends. While all this is happening, it means that, oh, hang on, that is clutch ult from Ruler. I mean, he dove yeah. solo into mm -hmm. the backline to kill his own target, gets away with a slick disengage after that point. JDG might have been half asleep in game one. They are well and truly awake as they put Jin Shao to rest <laughs> one no, time. No, not again. Not like this. Oh, they can stop. So I, I'll just say, you know, Karma comes very quickly. Not just the champion because <laughs> Jin Zhao on that, that Blitzcrank last game, I think he built up a lot of bad Karma with JDG. They just I'm came saying, knocking. Like, this guy must have like been a poro hunter or something like that in a previous <laughs> life because this Sejuani with that skin is really taking him to issue over that one. The JDG yes. marching in towards the base still have the last of their Baron buff, still have ultimates available should they wish. And this is the JDG that was promised that we've seen throughout this early split even though they do have that one loss. We'll see Hyjal with a nice fight back. He's still got a decent amount of damage coming out from Meteor and JDG is punished as they overextended in their advantage here, trying to burst down those Nexus Towers. So let's see, I mean, Knight and Ruler are still alive. So it doesn't really change the, what you can do on the map from LGD. There's a lot of damage ready and waiting should you over-engage somewhere on the map. And as you can see, Knight hiding around the corner using the vision. If anyone gets caught out by Knight, they are 100 to 0 completely. Is a stopwatch just purchased for Meteor at least. You know, maybe a little bit of saving grace there, but we're truly looking at those three item spikes being so monumental for JDG now, and it just gives them all the power in the world to move forward. Where we know if they have that power, it just looks so deadly. And while LGD, again, reminiscing on game number one a little bit, looked so good in that first game, it just felt like JDG didn't ever really wake up for the fight. And now they definitely woke up. Or, and like by the time they kind of realized they were in a very bad spot, the damage had already been done, Kanavi. Exactly. <laughs> like, buddy, at some point, you're going to have to answer for your crimes against Support Nation because Jin Zhao, <laughs> like, he's leveling a complaint after this one. This was this one's cyberbullying. <laughs> Gosh, it is actually so dirty. And he just, again, has so much health, it doesn't matter. He just can walk up. Even Knight is playing so big. LPC Ooh. is already out of the fight as Ruler's got the true focus. He's got a tier two tower now. Beardus getting engaged on Grand Tinder. Entrance will not actually connect there. There's a couple of tools utilized by JDG means they back away. They escape with their lives for now. That was that close to reaching that ultimate threshold execution from Syndra when you get up to those 100 stacks. You get that, you get half a death cap when you get 120. Knight has that anyway, so powerful on the Syndra. LPC very lucky to get away with his life. Again, JDG overextended last time they were in this kind of position, but they're just looking to take down the last tower and bottom side at least. And try to get another inhib open. As now it's Fearness stacking up the Meganar. Wondering if they can pull the trigger on something and catch out at least JDG with something. Okay, okay. LPC <laughs> gonna stop the backs. No, you don't get that quick back. Uh, but uh, we do actually want to see now renewed pressure from JDG as they have TPs available. They can utilize that so well. And here it comes. So this uh, half health turret, Venus goes in. Venus not going to get the engage he wanted. Here comes Meteor, another domino to the party. He got a backline access from Chow, but one by one they fall just like they were planned to. JDG wiped the floor with LGD, and there's only one last hope. It's LPC, and you're not getting out of this one. The Ezreal had come through for game two. Up. And we're right back to JDG's home court advantage. Valiant attempts by Fairness to try and buck the engage by JDG, but they're the ones who are thrown from the saddle. 
Nexus falls, going to a game three, and as it always happens, in best of threes, if you don't have the gas in the tank to go the distance beyond one specialized draft, you are going to have issues. JDG have woken up, and they're here to play.